Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to my full comprehensive leveling from level 1 all the way up to defeating pinnacle bosses version of the uh, Heat Shiver Frostblades Trickster. This is a build I've been working on for quite a while. I've leveled it up very high and been able to take on the pinnacle bosses in Solo Self Found with it and also in the Mayhem League that happened recently as well. So uh, it is capable of covering pretty much everything into the game, uh, potentially including Ubers, but as we'll see, that will require a lot of investment. But everything before that, it's going to be able to take down. It's a very good all-rounder build, an extremely fast mapper, quite a good bosser once you have everything set up. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go over where you need to start. I'm going to have timestamps. I'm also going to have a POB uh, that's pretty extensive here, and I'll kind of go over how we want to navigate this POB, but I do have uh, notes. This is actually the most uh, extensive POB I've ever built, and I have all the different stages and everything, including a super endgame min-maxed for fun version. Uh, if you're super rich, you can kind of try to aim for that, but it's uh, very strong. So we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing I have here is uh, level 1 through 12. Level 1 through 12 is when you're going to be using Frost Blades initially up until you get Spectral Helix. Spectral Helix is so insanely strong mechanically as it can hit multiple th or hit things multiple times uh, has an increased attack speed multiplier uh, it's just very very good and its damage effectiveness is pretty crazy as well so we are going to switch to that but up until that point we are going to be running uh, frost blades and so one of the things I'll be going through the notes here, uh, you can make a scion first to mule some extra items, get the onslaught support before you do the uh, first little side quest where you'll get your extra gems. Um, you can have it from level one, which is really nice. You'll also get to check the vendor for movement speed boots. So you kind of have a double chance at that. And you should have some extra like scrolls to buy a, an iron ring if you want for instance or um, you'll have extra potions to make sure you have a medium flask or extra flask to get medium life and mana flask uh, which is really nice because if you say go into brutus with a small life flask it's not so great uh, during this stage you'll want to pick up magic and rare unidentified items for transmutation fragments because you'll want a few extra transmutes to uh, buy gems early on uh, that mostly applies to League Start and Solo Self Found. Uh, I am also, I just want to say, uh, I'm going to be, since I worked on this a lot and I've played it a lot and it's probably my favorite build ever, uh, I am going to be updating this for future patches. So if you want to see that, uh, don't forget to subscribe. So, uh, but anyway, uh, onto the links. You want a three green link right away. Uh, Frost Blades Onslaught Added Cold will be what we're going to be using up until that point. Uh, I'm using Frost Bomb for exposure. This is also kind of good for the uh, very beginning because we are going through like these elemental damage nodes. Uh, Frost Bomb will actually do a pretty significant damage. Uh, early on and we can use it to clear like the squids uh, and skeletons in the early portions of the game like anything with low health we can just drop it on big packs of those and it should clear it uh, the first couple of things we're going to be using uh, is going to be clarity and precision clarity will just help us with our mana so we don't have to spam you know flasks all the time or so we don't run out and precision is just a, a little extra accuracy uh, we'll be using ancestral protector if you can get it i actually don't think shadow can get this uh, but if you'd like what you can do is you can actually just with the scion you milled you can run and do the breaking the breaking some eggs quest really quick uh, it's just going to add an extra like probably two to three minutes possibly and uh, you'll be able to mule over Ancestral Protector as well. Um, and then we're using two different movement skills. Dash is just to get over like ledges and stuff. And Whirling Blades is going to be our main movement skill. We're going to use this to get everywhere eventually when our attack speed's high enough. Uh, probably won't use it quite as frequently early on though. All right. So that's our gem setup. The skill tree for this portion is very simple. We're going through the elemental damage and then we're going down through the life and we're going to start making our way down here. Um, items, 
the items here are not like what you should expect to get they're not an expectation they're kind of goals of the general stuff you're looking at so uh, you are going to want a claw for whirling blades or a dagger but generally speaking uh, you can for the first portion of the game uh, use whatever if you get a high damage weapon of another type you can use that you can just grab like flame dash for your movement skill instead of whirling blades for a while um, but generally what we're going to be looking for is any kind of damage attack speed uh, anything like that uh, claw being preferred but not necessary um, and then like you know life attack speed um, regen defense is pretty much anything like that uh, damage some resists uh, you'll probably want at least uh, one sapphire ring before going into merveil if possible and possibly cold resist on another piece of gear if you want but uh what you can do is you can just sell an iron ring and a blue gem that you can buy for one uh, wisdom scroll uh, from the vendor and you can just sell those two together and you'll get a sapphire ring so yeah um anything like that uh generally speaking an iron ring is going to be pretty good just in general in the beginning just to give you a little extra damage um and Heavy belt is probably the belt we're going to be using most often because we're going to need strength and then, yeah, our flasks. So uh, moving on to the next part, got levels 12 to 24. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you switch these all over and also set up the proper configurations for each portion here. Um, but I don't think we have to change any of the configurations except uh, possibly, oh, the one thing we are going to want to change is uh, we'll switch resistance penalty to none. And for the end of this, we will have uh, Help Alira. I believe, yeah, that should be before 24 for sure. Uh, so for the notes here, I have uh, you'll start to acquire gems that you won't use yet. Uh, in Act 2, I think you get Night Blade, Trinity, and Elemental Damage with attacks. Uh, we're not going to be using them quite yet, but you'll want a weapon and shield or something like that, or two weapons in your weapon swap. Uh, so that you can level up these gems and swap them over when you need them You can also just go back and grab them later if you'd like, but it's always useful to have stuff leveling in your weapon swap um, And then we're going to be helping Elira, which is going to be useful But we're going to respec later using 20 orbs of regret and an onyx amulet Which will allow us to get the two skill points as if we help or killed all of the bandits later on so um Alir is kind of just to help us out with mana sustain, resistances, uh, we are going to get some crit multi, uh, we're not really using crit yet, but here's where we decided to go. Um, I should probably go over the skills because it'll explain the skill tree a little bit better. Uh, so for this portion, ooh, I accidentally added, uh, we won't be using elemental damage to attacks yet because we won't have a four link. Did I do anything else here? Um, these don't have to be linked together. I just kind of have them all grouped together. You're not going to have these in a four link at this point. But yeah, still running. Uh, instead of Frost Blades, we're now running Spectral Helix and still just Onslaught and Cold Damage. Um, if you have the unique helmet that gives you Onslaught, for instance, uh, you can get rid of Onslaught and put uh, any other damage link like Elemental Damage to Attacks. Uh, if you have a green, green, red, or uh, you can technically use Nightblade, but Nightblade before you get crit is kind of bad, honestly. Uh, still using Frost Bomb for now. We can no longer use this for clearing at this point. Um, it's just not going to be one shotting anything anymore, so it's just used for exposure. Uh, so that we get the extra damage from our added cold damage. Uh, we are now also running Herald of Ice and Skitter Bots on top of Precision and Clarity. And I'll go over how we're doing that because um, we do have, well, I guess we still have a decent amount of unreserved mana. Um, still Ancestral Protector, Dash, and we've added faster attacks to Whirling Blade. Uh, so what I decide to do, I like to come down here and grab Charisma right away. Uh, because of the Reservation Mastery that gives you 8% damage for each of your Aura or Herald skills affecting you, uh, this allows us to run 4 or potentially even 5. You could run like a low level Vitality as well because clearly we have some uh, left over here. Oh, I'm level 90. That's part of my issue. I would only be level 24. Uh, make sure to change the level. Okay, so we actually um, 
won't be having we're probably not going to be able to level clarity up as high as i have it here for instance so we might need a lower level clarity there you go like level two or level three something like that uh, that still gives us more mono regen for our cost so um do i have the right thing set up here yeah uh, but we'll be switching out of that and it's possible you'll have some mana and gear as well. Uh, you may also have a lower level precision just to make sure or, you know, swap those around. But yeah, that's pretty much the setup. So this single node is giving us 32% increased damage for one point, uh, which is a lot better than any other damage node we can get at this point. If we're running forward, that's the main reason I do this. Um, probably can't run that low level and make it 40 the low level vitality at this stage i just had inflated uh mana but yeah you can get that set up and then we're gonna start coming down here and we're gonna start getting the attack speed basically uh you can also go up here and start getting the attack speed from claws of the magpie but uh, I usually do it this way just to make sure I don't have to worry about accuracy. It's usually not that much of an issue with precision, especially with all the extra decks we get. Uh, but it just makes sure that I'm capped out, so I get acuity first. Uh, Item-wise, uh, basically we're just looking for you know better stuff, still life resists, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, move speed on boots, of course, is another important thing I didn't mention. Uh, but yeah, just get the best gear you can. Try to get stuff that has a good mixture of offensive and defensive stats. I just put two stats on everything, but they're good two stats. So, uh, but yeah, just hobble together everything as well as you can. And now we are going up until our first ascendancy, which will be around, um, usually around level, probably somewhere in between 30 and 34, you'll get your first ascendancy generally speaking not always but usually all right so the setup here uh, as you can see the skill tree we just got more attack speed uh, in the notes here i have uh, four links become available at the vendor at level 24 starting in act three and the vendor resets whenever you gain a level uh, so you'll want to check when you're in town if you don't find one on the ground uh, we're looking for three green and one red and in Act 4, you'll want some extra transmutes for bench crafting that we'll be using later on, like shortly after this section. Uh, I would recommend trying to get at least 8 extra transmutes, and if you don't, you can just pick up rares that are bases that you're not going to use, like, uh, you know, swords or daggers or axes or clubs, any kind of rares you find that you can't really make use of and just selling them unidentified to get transmute shards uh, because the cold damage crafts are going to become available in the uh, crystal vein in act four and those will help boost us up quite a bit so uh, up here uh, getting leech is really nice it kind of just makes it so that we don't have to worry too much about uh, you know mana and that kind of thing uh and at this stage we're also going to be specking out of uh we're also going to be specking out of uh, clarity so we're not going to have the mono regen there but we will have the alira uh mono regen at this point uh we're just focusing on getting attack speed uh and damage so claws of the magpie leech um and other than that we filled out acuity and uh, we're starting to come through this part because we're going to need to go down here pretty soon. Um, as far as our links, Spectral Helix, Onslaught, added cold elemental damage with attacks. Um, and then we still have Frost Bomb. We're now running Precision, uh, Herald of Ice, and Hatred. Uh, Hatred's going to be a big boost to our damage. We do lose 8% damage from this mastery, but honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and you can see we have enough unreserved mana to make this work now. Uh, Ancestral Protector, still running that. Uh, same, everything else is kind of the same here. Um, I don't think much has changed on the items. You just kind of want better versions of stuff you already had, if possible. Uh, two Stone Rings become more widely available somewhere in Act 2. Um, so I think they're maybe level 16 or 20 requirements. Oh, I think they're 20. So yeah, basically just work on that. Of course, every time try to make sure you're upgrading your flasks. If you get utility flasks, I just left these open. You can grab those. All right, 
moving on to the next one uh, 34 through 55 this one's a big jump um, you know there's some sections where there's not a ton to talk about and you make big leaps in progression uh, and it's hard to cover everything but yeah basically as i said before the crystal veins in act four has the crafting bench unlock for uh, cold damage uh, you'll want to use this on any jewelry or weapons you have that have open prefixes or um, just anything like that uh, upon defeating Kitava and entering Act 6, you'll get a resistance drop. This is the time to make sure your gear is sorted, as the act can be difficult if you don't have decent resistances. Don't be afraid to use resources such as essences and orbs of bindings and the crafting bench to upgrade your gear. And you'll want to have at least 50 or higher uh, elemental resistances after the drop. Otherwise, you're probably going to have a pretty tough time, like the, uh, the fire cannibals right in the area right afterwards do quite a lot of damage uh, there's also the little dogs that leave the burning ground behind and uh, yeah there's just all sorts of fire damage right after and of course the boss is uh, cold damage and you actually have some lightning damage too uh, in the uh, tower as well so uh, the rematch against Brutus so you'll have all that stuff um, and around this time we're going to start switching to our end game setup uh, grab all the gems and put the ones that you can't use in your weapon swap to level. You should have some crit now and you can add Nightblade, which will give you Elusive, which will start to make things feel smoother. Um, you can start moving towards your Frenzy charges around level 50 and then once you get your first extra Frenzy charge, switch to Ice Bite. You can do this even earlier because um, you want a couple levels on Ice Bite to make sure it, it isn't too big of a damage drop off from Added Cold. Um, but the frenzy charges themselves will give you a lot of attack speed and some more damage so they're actually a almost a big enough reason by themselves to switch to ice bite um the tree we have started grabbing a little bit of life so we have the life here uh, we have the life here and we have the life here things become a little bit more uh, defensively uh, difficult we've got started to get some crit as well as the uh, elusive stuff so we have from the shadows which gives elusive effect and then the dagger mastery which gives elusive grants uh 40 percent crit multi for skills supported by nightblade uh, this isn't specific to daggers so we can use this with the claw um, and then the increased effect of elusive as well um, other than that what you want to do is uh like i said grab this frenzy charge and then also you want to get the mark mastery around this point and i should probably put the levels here so everything looks right but uh yeah you'll want to grab the mark mastery uh which will give you gain frenzy charge when you hit a uh, marked enemy because we are now going to have set up uh, our assassin's mark on hit so we have mark on hit assassin's mark and inspiration um, so our main setup is now Spectral Helix, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Nightblade, and Ice Bite. Ice Bite probably won't be caught up in levels yet if you just got it in Act 6, but it'll catch up eventually. Uh, Hydrosphere with Bone Chill. Uh, you, can, I, you can just leave Hydrosphere at level 1, honestly. The main point is to inflict Exposure and uh, the Bone Chill. You can level it up if you want and put an inspiration or increase duration, but uh, I don't think that's necessary. You can just keep it at low level. Uh, we're using still the same aura setup, uh, still Ancestral protect, uh, Protector. We're going to keep Ancestral Protector until we switch to Frost Blades later on. Um, because Warchief gives more melee damage and not more... Uh, this just gives you more attack speed no matter what you're using so it doesn't have to be melee attack speed uh dash same kind of setup here uh we're now using withering steps uh to reset the elusive effect and we've added steel skin so we've got that all set up uh, gear wise now we're going to start crafting things this is pretty uh ambitious gear that i've got on here starting from here uh but basically it's just to give you an idea of what kind of stuff you're shooting towards so uh the important stats on the claw are going to be attack speed and crit chance 
Uh, you can craft cold damage or percent cold damage if you happen to get cold damage otherwise. Um, but any kind of damage really, we're not like hyper focused. Since we don't have heat shiver yet, we're not hyper focused on cold damage. It's literally just, uh, you know, if we have, uh, if we happen to hit cold damage, that's nice. But if it's fire damage or lightning damage or physical damage, that's all fine too. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this stage until we get heat shiver. Um, yeah, and then life resists a uh, good balance of attacking and defensive. So I have like attack speed on the shield, but you don't need that. Um, just life resists on helmet. Uh, life resists and some extra defensive stuff on the uh, body armor. Uh, you can craft, uh, you can start crafting the flat cold damage on your uh, gloves and your rings as well and your amulet. So you can get a lot of cold damage this way. Uh, it doesn't have to be max rolls. You don't want to waste like all of it. But uh, in X7, you get the second tier of cold damage. But if it's your league start or if you're on solo, se well, yeah, just league start in general, uh, you don't want to be using that in X7 because it costs alchemies, two alchemies. And you're going to need a lot of those when you first start mapping because alchemies don't become plentiful until you start uh, altar farming. So... Yeah, you're just not going to want to use them, basically, until red maps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, belt, you're going to want plenty of strength, so we're still going to be using a heavy belt, and you're going to want to try to get extra strength on your heavy belt as well. Um, same thing, a gate amulet's going to be your best bet. Uh, onyx amulet is fine, too. Anything with, like, the extra stats, you're going to need more intelligence and strength, so that's why a gate amulet is preferred. So if you're going to be crafting, go for that, or an onyx amulet. Uh, two stone rings, basically, life resists. You're probably not going to get anything exactly like this. Uh, you'll now have a, at some point during this time, you'll get a diamond flask as a quest reward, so you're going to want to start using that. Um, and you just press it whenever you have a tough enemy to give you the extra 100% crit chance. Um, I can now go into the configuration and start adding. Uh, we're now using frenzy charges and we are now elusive. So that's going to make a big difference. Um, as you can see that those two things triple our damage alone. So uh, really big on that. Um, I don't think there's anything else to check at this point stage because we're not going to be getting like power charges and it doesn't matter if they're we're probably not shocking unless uh, you have lightning damage somewhere so uh, get that all set up but yeah we kind of have the backbone here um and once you get up to that point you're going to be moving on to the second ascendancy so i'll move there and from the second ascendancy that'll take us all the way to the end game uh, so the notes I have here, um, you can basically swap to frost blades anytime you'd like after the second ascendancy. If you do so, um, two reasons for this, uh, the mob density in the latter half of the game starts going up and frost blades is just better clear. Um, but it's going to be doing a lot less damage still. So you may want to keep your spectral helix in an extra gem link or in a weapon swap. Um, so that you can pull that out for bosses because it just it's going to clear bosses so much faster so unless you have spectacular gear i would uh not just full-time use frost blades just yet i would hold on to the spectral helix um you want to try to get mark mastery for your frenzy charges on hit against marked enemies as soon as you can after switching to ice bite uh this is so you can keep your frenzies up pretty much permanently and uh, I like to get my third Ascendancy right after getting the skill point for Act 10, but you can grab it whenever you want. Uh, but make sure you start picking up your Masteries before then, uh, because we will be for our third Ascendancy uh, grabbing... Oh, do I not have this set up? Uh, we'll be grabbing Polymath, which as you can see is quite a big damage boost if you have some Masteries. Uh, we're getting like 40k damage here. Um, I'm usually around level 67 when I clear the axe and start moving on towards maps. Um, you, you can pretty much be anywhere. A lot of people are in between like 65 and 70, I would say is pretty average. Uh, so we get that set up. And then uh, lastly, you want to craft a bleed or corrupted blood immunity on your on a, a divine life flask as soon as you can. 
uh, you're going to start running into like corruptor mods and it's just going to be a pain to deal with if you don't have that you can use the pantheon that limits you to f having five corrupted blood stacks uh, if you want up until you get that but it's still going to be pretty difficult to deal with so i just try to get that out of the way early you can upgrade it to a better one later on um but yeah that's pretty much the setup uh skill tree wise we start to we got the second uh frenzy charge we got um actually i'm I, i'm not allocating this yet because this was actually meant uh, to be up until we do get the ascendancy so uh probably should have covered that but yeah we're we got like intuition because it's easy life it's one point away uh this is when i start getting the flash freeze the only reason i pick up the cold mastery is specifically uh because you can also you don't have to use the if you don't have heat shiver you can do the uh physical damage converted to cold instead or uh potentially the uh, cold exposure you inflict uh, applies additional minus cold resist Either one of these, as you can see, they're pretty similar damage wise, so you can do one of those. Um, I just have this on here in case you do have heat shiver, but yeah, you can fully just put whichever one you'd like really on there for now. Uh, but later on, you'll definitely uh, want to uh, get the increased freeze duration when you have heat shiver. So I'm just going to keep that on there to uh, keep the confusion away type thing. Uh, yeah, you start grabbing masteries. So we have life mastery. I also grab forces of nature around this point. Uh, I also spec out of the clever thief uh, using some of our, our refund points and go up to grab uh, claws of the falcon. And then I just get the claw mastery to give um, the leech there because we're going to get this anyway. So it's basically one point versus two points to get leech. So big difference there. Um, we get precision increased mana reservation mastery here as well so yeah pretty much uh just picking up masteries and getting some of the extra stuff and then i'm starting to work my way up to depth perception at this point uh all right skill gems aren't really changed uh you should be like probably you might not be 17 you might be uh 16 at this point but you should be kind of close to that uh hydrosphere bone chill still uh, precision herald device hatred and uh, you can kind of fit in uh, defiance banner now if your mana is a little bit higher at this point uh, we still have some unreserved mana uh, defiance banner just gives you a little bit extra evasion and armor um, i prefer hybrid gear at this point i've come to instead of going pure evasion hybrid gear will roll a lot of good stuff uh, so I kind of go with that, but pure evasion gear is perfectly fine as well. Um, and then the reduced uh, enemy critical strike chance for nearby enemies is really good since we're still probably using helix. Uh, I do have frostblade set up by the way on this, so uh, we can see here. So I, I'm doing 191,000 damage on uh, spectral helix and then 158 on um, frostblades. Now that doesn't tell the full story because Spectral Helix will often hit like twice per attack. So you're actually doing uh, close to triple the damage instead of just like whatever it is, uh, like 30% more damage or 25% more damage like it shows on the uh, tooltip. It's actually a lot more than that because you're hitting... Yeah, you're you're hitting most things twice with Spectral Helix. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the actual damage realistically against like bosses and stuff is going to be triple and not like 25 to 30 percent more like it might appear in the pob so uh but yeah back to us more than likely we're still using spectral helix up until we kill T kitaba uh, ancestral protector dash and if you do use frost blades you can switch over to ancestral war chief uh, from ancestral protector uh, same story on a lot of these things um yeah nothing's really changed here uh, gear wise uh, i didn't make any changes to the gear here at all i think except for i added uh stibnite and sulfur flasks which we get from quest rewards up until this point so oh and silver flask too so you should be able to have like a full array of utility flasks uh probably not going to have them crafted yet you won't need a mana flask anymore and then i have my uh bleed immunity divine life flask you can do like just beginner kind of 
uh, crafts on your flasks, of course. If you want, just transmute them. Uh, try to get some basic stuff on them, but it isn't super necessary. I accidentally rolled over my headphones on my chair. Uh, take a quick sip of coffee here. All right. But yeah, I didn't even make any changes because if you had gear this good, you, this is also good enough to beat the campaign. So uh, kind of a workaround here. All right, so you've beaten the campaign. So where do we go from here? Uh, this is early maps. Now, if you have everything set up properly, if you're properly geared, uh, you can pretty much move right into maps. Uh, there's not too much, but uh, so... You want to make sure your LE resist capped before maps. Uh, if not, you can either farm like heist, desecrated chambers. Uh, you can even do blood aqueducts if you want in, in Act 9. Um, but desecrated chambers in Act 10 will give you some more experience and a little bit higher item level stuff. Uh, and you'll want to use your bench crafts to make sure that you're capped. Uh, we can now move our resist penalty. And as you can see, uh, the gear I have, I should have done that earlier as we were going through, but... Uh, the gear I have on there is uh, overcapped resist. And we will be uh, at the end of this. What do I have? 75, 78? Yeah, this 78 should pretty much cover everything through white maps, give or take. So switch this over. Nope, not 677. My double click isn't working properly. There you go. <laughs> All right, fixed. Um, you want to... Okay, now's the time where I'm going to pull up the Atlas skill tree. Hit this over here. Okay, so you'll want to focus on um, June missions and essence points in your skill tree for the first 10 or so maps. So you'll do your uh, tier one and two maps, basically. And the way you'll set everything up is you'll want to go up here Grab this, uh, Covert Stakeouts, that'll give you increased chance uh, for random encounters in maps to have June mission, or to be June. And then uh, Master Missions from completing your maps have 100% chance, increased chance to be June. Uh, we'll also be grabbing Focused Investigation, which gives increased uh, additional chance for June missions. And then we will grab the Essences. So that'll be uh, one tier one and two maps. We'll have that set up and you can blast some maps, get some June missions built up. Uh, but basically there are a ton of, uh, we're going to need a lot of June missions and a lot of encounters there because there are a lot of unveils that we want. And in particular, we're going to need Gravicious and Elrion. So we want to remove people from betrayal until we're sure we have Gravicious and Elrion uh, in our betrayal board because they both have necessary crafts for the end game of this build so <clears throat> excuse me uh you'll want to make sure you have that uh if you're a solo self found you want to make sure you set aside any magic find gear you have that has good stats so if you find a ring that has like 30 percent magic find and life and a resist on it or something uh make sure you stash that any kind of magic re resist or magic find gear you find uh stash it because you might need to use it later to hunt for uh core uniques and i'll cover that a little bit later uh you'll start you'll want to start getting spell suppression at this point uh you want to be 100 percent spell suppression before you reach red maps if you're in softcore uh earlier if you're in hardcore you want to reach 100 percent spell suppression asap like immediately if you can uh even sacrificing other stuff to get it but generally speaking this isn't a hardcore build uh some of my viewers have played it on hardcore and in softcore i think it's fine to just make sure your spell suppress capped before red maps all right uh skill tree at this point uh we've just started picking up you know more good stuff so we've got depth perception now um we're getting like the the crit chance crit multi stuff here um started filling out like elemental focus assassination all that stuff uh we fully have like polymath and everything set up Oop, i have hydrosphere uh and we have full time switch to frost blades make sure i have all this stuff set up all right so yeah we're we're now full time frost blades um one of the 
aims as well we should be getting this should be obvious but we should be looking to get a five or a six link at this point if we can um while we're doing yellow or white maps and moving into yellow maps um five links aren't that hard to get in terms of either a you can use the bench craft it's only 150 fusings uh a lot of times like the arch nemesis monsters will drop unusable six links for you like uh like weapons or something two-handed weapons uh if you get that kind of stuff you can sell them for 20 fusings and you're already like more than one eighth of the way to uh crafting a five link with the bench craft so that's one way you can do it uh but i have it set up so that i have a five link in this setup so we have uh frost blades for clearing we're going to be using immortal call or ancestral call rather uh, so you can see our damage goes down and then for a single target we do a gem swap with elemental damage with attacks so for our main setup frost blades multi-strike night blade ice bite and elemental damage to attacks uh, with against uh, bosses and then ancestral call for general map clear um, against tough arch nemesis mods you'll also probably want to switch over to elemental damage with attacks but in the next patch that may become irrelevant because it looks like they're uh, changing them in a way that will make them probably not that much of an issue. Uh, still Hydrosphere Bone Chill, um, same setup. I, everything else is the same except we're now using Ancestral War Chief. Uh, we'll mostly just be dropping this on hard bosses. Gives us a pretty substantial damage increase, 17% more damage. Uh, Dash, Whirling Blades, same kind of thing. Uh, still not leveling Assassin's Mark because we're more than likely not going to have enough uh, unreserved mana later on. We want to make sure that we can properly transition into Grace later on, which by the way, you should be leveling Grace all the way through this. Uh, especially by the time you get to maps. Uh, yeah, everything's pretty much the same here. So uh, item-wise, we should be looking to get better items. Um, you can drop fractured items from Arch Nemesis or buy them. The three core uh, core kind of item setups you're going to want are you're going to want tier 3 or higher of either attack speed, cold damage, or crit chance, fractured onto a claw, uh, preferably a claw with a, an, a base attack speed of 1.6. And if you get that fracture, you can use... Uh, essences, which at this point will be progressing essences um, in the skill tree a little bit as well. So we should be able to get a good amount of those. Um, but you can use essences or harvest to craft the others, basically kind of target crafting. Uh, also, p potentially you can use fossils as well. Um, we're going to be looking to just get better versions of our gear. This is probably still much better than what you're actually going to get, but it just kind of gives you a goal. Like on a shield, you're going to want life, resistance, and spell suppress at this point, if possible. If not, uh, just like high life, high resist is good, or just really high resistances and some life to kind of cap things out. Uh, you can craft whatever you need. You should get some unveils now, so the... Uh, hybrid elemental and chaos resist stuff comes into play which will allow you to get uh start moving up to in chaos resistance uh helmet if you don't have your heat shiver yet uh which it's possible you won't you'll just want high life high resist um and if you can get spell suppress on your helmet i'd prefer not to because then you're gonna have to mess with your uh suppression again when you get your uh, when you do get your heat shiver so i'd prefer not to get suppress on my helmet but you know if you get it on there it's no big deal you'll just have to switch things around later uh, body armor same kind of deal life resist uh, hopefully spell suppress um, gloves we can also get offensive stuff on gloves so like life and offensive stuff uh, gloves is one of those things that if you want you can skip out on the life a little bit to <clears throat> focus more on offensive stats and it's not that big of a deal but uh yeah you can definitely get life on there uh boots uh boots you definitely want to try to get spell suppress on and then movement speed and life are going to be the core things and uh any resist you can get really uh amulet you're probably not going to have a yoke of suffering unless you bought one uh yoke and mayhem was really expensive i think a lot of people are coming around to the power of yoke 
So uh, whereas at the beginning of Lake of Calandra, it was very cheap. And it might have just been because there weren't that many people playing Mayhem. But um, in, the, in any case, you just want to make sure the amulet gets... The jewelry is for getting your attributes sorted. Uh, the attrib or the amulet in particular. So like all attributes can be nice or just like increased strength or intelligence rolls. And other than that, uh, any life and resist you can get. And then like any kind of uh, offensive stuff, whether it be cold damage to attacks, uh, fizz damage to attacks is fine as well because we convert 60% of it to cold anyway. Um, you can get attack speed. You can get percent cold damage. You can get plus one to cold skill gems which is fine too it's not like super good but it's like four percent more damage still uh crit multi crit chance anything like that really um same thing with rings kind of a balance between offensive and defensive stats for now uh we're going to be you know probably using two stone rings to help with the resistances here as well and then yeah any offensive stats you can get on top of that um and yeah belt same kind of thing except you can roll elemental damage with attacks uh, on it, which is nice. Uh, you can also craft like hybrid armor evasion is another thing for a prefix if your suffixes are filled up. So there's lots of good stuff here, uh, but you're going to want as much strength as possible. Um, around this point is when we start crafting our flasks, if we can. Uh, preferably you find from Arch Nemesis mods higher item level versions of your silver, stibnite, sulfur, and diamond flasks. Um, I just put like generally good stuff on here and then the chance to gain a flash charge when we deal crit, uh, we have 71% crit chance at this point. Uh, you know, results may vary there. I've had like 34% crit chance at this stage before, um, where, and at that point, these won't be as effective, but yeah, just kind of do your best on these, uh, and you're going to want to start automating them using your, uh, what are they called, instilling orbs. So yeah, that's around that time. Um, so this is covering early maps. Uh, let's get into 78 to 90, which is getting our uniques and starting to progress into red maps. All right, so we have that kind of stuff here i don't think okay now we're gonna start having to add some more stuff so uh because we now have heat shiver ziri step southbound and yoke i'm going to uh change some of these things up we're gonna go ahead and add all of that kind of stuff and uh yeah we have heart stopper on all right so let's get to the notes here. Um, at some point here, you'll want to do Uber Lab if you find, or if you're unable to find a trial to get an offering of the goddess, uh, you'll do Kirak missions. I should probably at this point as well uh, pull up the skill tree. So what you're going to want to do when you're going from uh, later white maps to yellow maps is you're going to want to pop up through here. Uh, this is especially important in Solo Cell Found. You're going to want a lot of Kirak missions. Um, and also, these nodes up here just help you with your map sustain and getting up to higher maps. Um, you can spec out of these if you're magic finding in lower maps uh, in order to make sure that you're finding more lower level maps. But uh, for now, those are nice to spec into. And then from here, I like to make sure we're getting the strong box stuff. So I go up here and then I grab... Uh, the strong box node down here to guarantee an additional strong box. Uh, you can spec out of the June missions and all the June stuff basically as soon as you get all of the necessary crafts, which are going to be uh, the percent pen elemental penetration on the weapon, the physical taken as elemental craft for body armor, and the minus monocost uh, Elrion ring for uh, for jewelry. So we have that, and then uh, I think it's best to go up into here, uh, grab Amplified Energies to give us higher tier essences, and I also like to grab Heart of the Grove early on because we do want a little bit of extra like harvest stuff going on. Uh, harvests become enormously important, but um, 
I'm not sure exactly what this is, but basically this is the kind of thing you should aim towards uh, for the yellow maps. So yeah, um, we want to get Karak missions and higher tier map drop chance nodes in the Atlas tree to make progression easier so you can stack up Karak missions to get Atlas completion later. Uh, it's also important to leave some white and yellow Karak uh, missions uncompleted for later on when you're trying to get those last unique maps because when you re-roll your unique maps using the uh what are they called using the scouting reports when you do that uh it re-rolls all three tiers so it'll basically triple your chance of getting the uh, unique map that you want when you're pushing for completion of those so that's important to keep in mind um and then you can get strong box nodes nearby so you can start getting scarabs and a chance at corrupted six links which we get through um the tamper proof which makes all of our strong boxes corrupted so important there uh if you hit a wall and don't have your core uniques yet uh if you're not on trade and haven't been able to bought them buy them and you haven't gotten them to drop by luck you'll have to magic find in lower maps uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to put on your best magic find gear while remaining resist uh, capped and allocate uh, enriched entities on the atlas passive tree. Run low le level maps with multiple bosses such as Strand and Vol Pyramid. Uh, the bosses tend to drop a ton of uniques especially if you have good quanta rarity and you can get double bosses uh, through enriched entities. So uh, for here you want to travel over this way we're gonna to have to go this way anyway for uh like our legion stuff later on so it's not too bad and then you'll get all this stuff which increases the rarity of items dropped by bosses and then uh enriched entities which makes it so that uh final boss in the map drops an additional basic currency item which isn't super helpful but you have a 20 percent chance for bosses to be duplicated that means in strand for instance you'll you could have four bosses instead of two which is increases the amount of uniques dropped considerably. Fall Pyramid has three bosses and will increase it to six. And I think Fall Pyramid's currently tier four. Uh, but basically in future leagues, just try to find maps using the wiki that have multiple bosses on them to use this me method. Um, depending on your gear, you may want to add grace. You can do this by adding Conqueror's Efficiency or they're actually removing Conqueror's Efficiency. So for now, this is accurate, but in the future, they're moving mana reservation efficiency to the ba uh, base jewel drop pool. So you want to just any jewel, preferably with other positive benefits, but as long as it has at least 4% uh, mana reservation efficiency, or you can use two jewels um, in, there's another sl uh, slot here as well. So you could have uh, two that have 2% if there's like a range, like in the future, if the range is two to 4% mono reservation efficiency for rare jewels, I don't know what it will be, but <laughs> just try to get about 4%, uh, which will leave us with 49 uh, mana. Um, and run a low level precision and either accuracy on your gear so you can get accuracy on like shield ring amulet whatever or uh, you can also allocate the second accuracy mastery that gives you plus three accuracy per dex uh, at this stage in the example that would give us 227 additional base accuracy which would be multiplied by all of the uh, increased global accuracy rating percentage we have on the tree so that's uh, important there. Uh, if you have trouble capping your spell suppression, you can do some Itziri runs to get Itziri step. Um, in order to do this, you'll want to allocate the Pantheon Soul of Yugal and the Elemental Mastery that reduces reflect damage, as uh, otherwise you'll die to Itziri's split stage from her mirror holding clone. I should probably also add... Um, we should... The pantheons so the pantheons we're going to be wanting to run are going to be soul of arakali uh which gives us a lot of good stuff um we're kind of weak to damage over time because we have a low life pool we are running heart stopper which gives us less damage taken from damage of the time uh over time 50 percent of the time 
but Soul of Arakali is just overall helpful. Also makes it easier to cap um, against damage over time from Chaos Resist with the Void Anomaly. All You want to get all three of the uh, extra souls for this. And for Minor God, generally speaking, we're going to be wanting to run Soul of uh, Aberath because Burning Ground is such a big deal. Um, and Ignites can actually be somewhat dangerous for us because, once again, we have a low life pool. Uh, this helps with that. And we don't get Ignite Immunity usually. But... Uh, then we're going to want to get uh, Mephod the Earth Scorcher, which uh, I believe he's from, I forget what the map's called, but uh, the, the Fire Goat map, whichever one he's on, uh, that's similar to the one that gives you a skill point in Act 6. Um, Aberath, I don't know. But yeah, um, but for this particular one, you'll actually want to run Soul of Yugle, and then you'll want to swap over this Mastery that gives you uh, Exposure, additional exposure and you want to instead allocate the uh, reduce reflect elemental damage taken all right um and once you have those two things you'll be elemental damage immune you can then uh kill it ziri and you won't accidentally kill yourself to uh reflect and you kill as many at Ziri's as you need to kill in order to get a ziri step which has a lot of spell suppression as you can see, it can roll up to 26% spell suppress. So very good there. Um, yeah, you just kind of magic find until you get at least your heat shiver. I wouldn't move on at all until you have a heat shiver. So like um, heat shiver is like the mandatory thing. It's a very common unique though. Um, I got a bunch of these, you know, while I was trying to magic find for my yoke, which is a little bit rare. Uh, southbound is also very nice to have at this point uh, because our crit chance is high enough that we're going to be freezing all the time and it gives a huge amount of flat cold damage to attacks and the 100% increased freeze duration on enemies is enormously powerful once you have your heat shiver uh, because it lets you keep things permafrozen and thus you get the bonus the 100% cold damage is extra fire uh, consistently so uh, skill tree wise we have um, a, basically added this mastery. We've now added the grace mastery. We now have this for the 4% uh, mana reservation efficiency so that we can run grace. Uh, we're now, we now have the spell suppression stuff. So inveterate and the spell suppress mastery, which gives us 100% increased crit chance. Um, critical mastery, I like to take increased effective non-damaging ailments you inflict with crit strikes. Uh, to help along with, because the only other uh, effective non-damaging ailments we currently have is from Elemental Focus, so that'll give us 70% to give us higher chills and shocks when we get yoke. Um, if you're still not shocking 100% on things, you can switch this over to 40% increased of effect of non-damaging ailments. Uh, chances are very good, though, that you'll at least be max chilling things because we get extra effective cold ailments from uh, flash freeze and that kind of stuff here 40 percent which is quite a lot uh, but you might not be max freezing with the oak and if you want to do that you can switch the elemental mastery over to that um other than that we just uh, went through one with nature grabbed finesse for some extra attack speed and accuracy grabbed quick step to make sure we're uh, maxed out on uh, spell suppress if you don't need to grab quick step to be maxed out if you have it on gear don't bother uh, put it elsewhere um, and yeah that's pretty much it where you grabbed resourcefulness just kind of cleaned things up so before cluster jewel setups and everything this is basically the end game tree this is this tree and this setup should be good enough to get us into uh tier 16s so get to start altar farming uh ideally you have a six link at this point um you won't be running trinity if you do not have heat shiver um you may be running inspiration depending on your other setups and you may be running ancestral call um you'll probably want to and i should probably add this i currently have divine judgment uh so at this stage i still have it um, using a gem swap so we would swap elemental damage with attacks with the ancestral call that's kind of why i have trinity sidelined here i uh, won't be using trinity 
Uh, this will be our regular clear setup, which would be Frostblade's Multi-Strike Nightblade, Ice Bite, Ancestral Call, and probably Inspiration. Um, the Inspiration is used specifically because we want to make sure we can still use uh, Assassin's Mark and everything, but honestly, it's not 100% needed. You can just as well go here. Um, so if we don't have Inspiration, that means Assassin's Mark is going to cost... Uh, 10 mana that doesn't seem right because that's what it was oh because i already have inspiration on there uh but our frost blades will cost 11 mana and at at this stage that's still fine if you're using a level one assassin's mark if you started leveling up your assassin's mark you want to use trinity but you can probably get rid of turn or, or sorry inspiration you can probably get rid of inspiration here though uh but if you happen to get a six link that's like uh three green three red you can also use this setup so pretty much everything here um and then gear wise um just looking for upgraded versions you're going to want to try to refine things at this stage hopefully you've unlocked the uh weapon penetration uh elemental penetration for your claws uh just keep looking for better claws uh type thing um I have a little bit of accuracy on my shield it looks like just to get the max accuracy since we're gonna have to run a low level precision uh which i should have probably won over um for our setup here oops uh, i have these three set up in my shield uh looks like oh i don't even have an influence shield yet i think i have this uh pretty malaligned but yeah we're getting these set up in their own separate things so that we can uh later where do I have my precision? Do I not even have precision in here at all? Ah, that's the problem. I forgot to add it. Um, so looks like we have it without it. But in case you don't have accuracy on a piece of gear, you are going to want uh, low-level precision here. That's why I had inspiration. I knew there was a good reason for it. So uh, probably like a level, you know, maybe two precision or something be good enough, even if you don't have accuracy on gear. Like if we got rid of that uh heat shiver we're not going to have it enchanted or anything yet um hopefully by now you have the um physical as taken as elemental craft for your body armor you can get that uh this is when you're going to start being able to craft influence but i'll cover that in the next one over um uh yeah and yoke of suffering if you can get it if not just the best like damage life amulet you can get um and yeah, we get minus mana cost uh, jewelry now, hopefully, from Elrion. And we can start crafting that. These are very ambitious, good rings. You're probably not going to have rings this good at this point. But, you know, it's just kind of an example. Um, and yeah, uh, still using a heavy belt because we haven't gotten uh, our uh, brutal restraint or whatever, our historic jewel, to give us all of our extra strength. So we're still going to need a boatload of strength from our belt slot. All right, that covers that. Kind of moving on to the uh, final. This is the refining stage, uh, basically where we get everything in line for like the final version of the build and everything after that is just uh, refining it to min max as much as possible. Um, before I get into this point, I just wanna say that I do have a section here for like leveling uniques. It's not, you know, you can use kind of improvise but these are just generally like decent stuff you can use for leveling you can use other stuff like instead of heat shiver uh you can use the helmet that gives you onslaught for instance that'd be very good but yeah let's get on to the final stages here um so moving into the refining the build guide uh oh i didn't really talk about the kind of early end game stuff so just getting into red maps uh you'll want to alter farm um, to get currency, especially map currency, you're going to need a ton of like orbs of unmaking, for instance. Uh, get your flasks crafted properly. You'll need 20 instilling orbs. Uh, glass blower bobbles aren't very common, but you can easily trade your wet stones uh, for them at the uh, armor and weapon vendors in any town, and, or in the later towns at least. And you can also... Um, trade your armor scraps for whetstones if you need to do that so you can trade them for glass blower baubles arch nemesis should make both of those very common so you should be able to get a lot of baubles um 
you want to always run harvest as it's used for many things especially in solo cell found for crafting uh, you can swap pinnacle boss fragments to other versions of it to make sure you can run like your elders and stuff uh, you can swap scarabs and essences you're not going to be using to ones that you can use for crafting using uh, harvest you can swap legion uh, or breach fragments i think breach i know for sure legion i think you can do breach as well correct me if i'm wrong um, same kind of thing and it's probably wise to keep at least a few harvest nodes uh, allocated no matter what you're doing um, so that you can build up your resources your uh, tree should look something we'll probably spec out of this at a certain point so once we're getting up to late game uh, we're going to go ahead and like get rid of all this stuff here uh, we're gonna instead start going through here we can use this to block stuff we don't want when we don't need it like if we're not gonna run ritual we can block ritual it'll just give us a little extra something here and we're going to go through this way and that lets us spec out of all of this stuff here giving us freeing up quite a lot of points and when we're altar farming we're gonna want this kind of stuff here uh, shadow of the hunger uh, rampant growth and uh, I like to get eldritch gaze as soon as I'm geared up enough to do it um, if you do not have if you're you don't feel geared up enough you don't have to do that uh, other things that are important to do uh, you can get rid of this when you're not like farming for specific stuff and spec into it when you need it um, but yeah from here we're gonna do like legion farming stuff so we're gonna want to get all the legion stuff um, because eventually we're going to want our historic jewel so we get that um i like to get uh, abyss stuff because it's a lot of experience so you can grab that if you'd like um basically mostly everything like you can get abyss you can get the other essence stuff uh it's kind of mix and match but the important things are definitely going to be uh rampant growth and shadow of the hunger and then like the legion stuff so that is going to be important because we are going to need to do legion and also harvest stuff isn't bad to grab so you could do you know whatever anything like this you can kind of change things up like i said grab essence stuff grab strong box stuff uh whatever your heart desires uh when i get into red maps i also like to grab uh shaping the skies because it just helps with maintenance like these three nodes should be good enough especially once you do beat the first eldritch bosses um but yeah uh expedition is also good to use early on as rog will help with your uh, upgrades especially jewel crafting tujin is also nice for currency early on and i skip gwenon and then uh the other guy whatever his name is uh danig or whatever um you, you can do him he gives you good stuff as well but yeah you're kind of near some uh expedition stuff here uh so you can just like reach out and grab this stuff expedition's good here uh oops that's harbinger stuff but yeah you can pop out around this way and grab the expedition stuff here and you'll you'll have to like spec out of some stuff when you go through but yeah basically expedition is really good so uh very happy to go and grab all of that stuff for progression uh, i talked about my other guide how to craft various things with expedition um with rog specifically especially jewels uh delve is also helpful for map sustain i don't bother spiking into delve in the atlas passive tree i just run my earlier missions uh delve down a little bit and kind of just grab them as i go uh, we do get a little bit of extra delve the way we path uh, as far as delve missions compared to other ones uh, we get a four percent increased chance of it being a delve mission so um and you want to start by at least the end of yellow maps the city nodes will give you tons of maps and uh they respect your preferred map slots so make sure you delve a bit before here hitting tier 14 so they um your preferred map slots will be respected by the delve cities so anything you put in them will uh carry over so if you like favorite your if you favorite like underground sea or something which i like to use a lot for 
for altar farming it will do that uh, but it won't respect your atlas tree so if you have a singular focus you're not going to get all of the same map uh, you will just get like um, your favorited maps in a little bit higher amount basically from the cities um, and then you want to clean up all your eldritch quests do your eater of worlds do your uh, searing uh, exarch do those two, um, do all the Maven quest up, up, up to 10 witness bosses just to get those out of the way, uh, kind of get your first started there. And then we can move into refining. Uh, so refining basically means we're going to be looking for lethal pride. Uh, we're going to be looking for cluster jewels. Um, and we are going to be looking for Circle of Fear, specifically the one with increased cold damage while affected by Herald of Ice. And Herald Device has increased buff effect. So I have some, and yeah, we're just upgrading. I'm not going to go over anything else in detail because it's just more of the same. I guess uh, you should note that you're going to want to quality up your stuff. So like uh, the first thing you should quality up is your frost blades. You're not going to want to do that using the uh, GCP recipe to flip it, but all of your support gems you are going to want to flip with uh, GCPs, except maybe Ice Bite, which you might want to leave. Um, if you do decide to flip Ice Bite to save GCPs, like if you're in solo self found and can't buy them, or you just don't have a lot, um, if you do decide to do that, probably farm lower tier maps for a little while. Maybe use that as an opportunity to uh, magic find again in tier one or tier like white maps basically until you get some gem levels back up to make up for it because they'll reset to level one in order to get 20 quality. If you don't know, uh, basically you just sell a uh, level 20 gem with one gem cutter's prism. You get a 20 quality level one version of that exact same gem. So, uh, but yeah. Things to note here, we're getting quality on all of our stuff, uh, trying to, uh, you know, get vol it to get it to 21 if possible. That stuff's important. Um, but other than that, you know, you're kind of just staying on the same path. Uh, so start here once you're easily farming tier 16s and have all the base uniques as well as a good amount of orbs of unmaking for respects. because we're going to have to mess around with a lot of passive trees. Acquiring lethal pride. Uh, that fits into one of your frenzy charges uh, or one of the nodes by your frenzy charges aim for at least one double damage roll and two more useful rolls or better otherwise keep farming legion so um, one of these two nodes this one or this one uh, you'll want a lethal pride that gives you good benefits in one of these two nodes uh, it doesn't really matter too much which one but uh yeah you can like the benefit of having it up here is that it allows you to take this node right here, which isn't strength of blood. If I get rid of this um, with, oop, just let me despec out of this really quick. Uh, wind Dancer, if you get high block chance and high evasion, you might want to spec into Wind Dancer. So optimally, this might actually be a better spot for this, but I just used an example of one I found. Um, this one, is not like super beneficial it's kind of middle of the road it's got i i went like a quarter of the way down uh you can use find timeless jewels to find ones for the best slot so basically um say i'm looking for uh this slot in particular actually we'll just go to the one that i did use which was wind dancer just as the example and you'll search for total dps uh filter nodes generate you'll want lethal pride and then uh, I hit search and it brings up ones and it shows like which ones would be good damage for me in this spot. So this one has, this would be the best one for the damage for the stuff I have allocated, which is what the filter nodes is for. Uh, what I did is I went about a quarter of the way down and just picked one out for here. Like I found one that had double damage basically. I just uh, scrolled around a little bit. Uh, roughly in this area until I found one that had uh, double damage so now obviously you can't be picky I just wanted to show my methods to show you that I'm not using like a super overpowered uh, jewel here but yeah um, the one I picked has some useless nodes like uh, totem placement it does have life and regen but yeah just and strength so the beneficial offensive nodes would be uh, crit multi uh, double damage chance and uh, 
actually that might be it <laughs> yeah so not too beneficial but you know beneficial enough to get the point across uh in my previous guide i did show how to craft your cluster jewels so you got that um so for acquiring lethal pride you just want to farm legion looking for cluster jewels in priority for your large you want an eight or nine passive preferably eight uh cold is the preferred you can also use elemental or claw large uh temporarily um and then you'll want at least one critical and one uh, uh ailment effect medium or two ailment effect mediums uh the crit one is very nice because it has specifically the um pressure points which gives you five percent chance for your critical strikes to deal double damage double damage is really good for this because it makes it easier to freeze basically uh is what it comes down to all right um and then um oh next big thing we're going to be looking for a circle of fear and synthesized memory maps these two next tips are the last things for getting us refined which is to farm a hunter for the hunter influence shields or hunter exalted orb which you can use to slam a shield in order to get the 30 percent reduced mana reservation mod so that we can run uh grace more easily without having to jump through a bunch of hoops and we can have max level precision that way uh so we can do this and then circle of fear from synthesis memory maps uh allocate all of the synth synthesis memory um uh, or synthesis map nodes which are these ones up here so basically we would go you know whatever the best path for us would be uh pop up here and we would get everything except for this uh memento mori the big one so it would get at least these nodes uh you can get this one too for the extra pack size but it's not super necessary uh, and you want to have all of that allocated while you're doing this. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set our fa favorite map uh, as Mesa. So we're going to put all of our favorite maps as Mesa. And then we can either allocate a singular focus, which means only Mesas will, will be able to drop. Uh, or we can also just go to Delve Cities, which will give us a lot of Mesas that way and uh, we just run maps until we have basically a huge amount of mesas like 20 to like 80 just a large number of mesas you want a bunch of them um you just go through all of them that aren't corrupted you elk them all uh and then you go to the mesa uh make sure before you go to mesa you click off of singular focus you can't have this on uh, while you're running the mesas or the synthesized maps can't drop so that's a very important step um, and then uh, we're just going to keep running that you can also run eldritch entities again because of the double boss chance which gives us more chances to drop the things but it literally takes 15 seconds you just bum rush straight to the middle of the map uh, kill the mesa map boss who is oak basically and you just uh keep that going you should be able to get a bunch of synthesis maps maybe not a bunch but at least a few uh which will give you some chances and you just basically rinse and repeat until you get the proper circle of fear uh for it or at least one that's good enough and then you can go back and farm it later if you get tired of it uh you should also if you you can also if you want grab the uh other nodes that give you increased chances to drop like uh conquered the conquerors and uh, remnants of the past for instance which means if you do that while you're doing this method uh, you'll get a ton of uh, guardian maps which are going to be very useful um, and lastly the very last thing we're going to do and i don't have this done i don't have a watcher's eye i don't think in this setup yet so we're at about 15 million uh, dps and 50 effective health pool oh actually we're probably higher than that because at this stage we're generating power charges uh we're fortified um <clears throat> body armor is going to have the melee chance to fortify i talk about this in the main guide so i don't want to go over like everything on here uh but yeah this is this should be pretty much our setup so uh about 18 million dps and that's with a you know good claw with like tier one rolls and everything like pretty high-end gear so this is the kind of end game setup um the jewels i have here are life um 
to one crit multi and one attack speed roll and then the freeze duration on enemies roll uh which is really nice for like the middle game type thing uh going into your first like pinnacle bosses before you start getting to crazy high dps um but i think all the setup is correct here now yeah all right so that's all set up um and finally that's pretty much it once you get to the stage where you're farming uber or elder and uber elder you should pretty much be able to do like cirrus uh shaper um even maven and stuff with this exact kind of setup it'll be even easier once you get your watcher's eye um you're going to be looking for a watcher's eye with flat cold damage with hatred or percent cold damage with hatred um, or one of the precision ones. I think there's an attack damage precision one, an attack speed one, and a crit multi one. Any of those are fine. Uh, so, yeah, basically that kind of stuff is what you're looking for in Watcher's Eye. Once you get into this point, um, yep, you're pretty much set. And for just for fun, I'll go into the min maxed version of the build, uh, which uses all sorts of kooky stuff uh, you can look at. It's basically using like double corrupts. Uh, synthesized stuff um you know just just crazy stuff that you're probably not going to get like all t1 rolls on on things just uh it's kind of out of reach but you know it's it's here type thing if for if you do want to run it uh so yeah that's uh pretty much the setup i think that's everything yeah so yeah, we have over 90,000 effective health here. We have, uh, you know, uh, over 120 million damage. It's, this is just like a crazy, this, uh, you're probably never gonna get this Timeless Jewel. This Timeless Jewel is straight up five, uh, five double damage. <laughs> now it's, it's pretty unreasonable to expect to get something like this. And also it has like physical damage taken as fire on top of that. Yeah, look at all that, that's crazy might even be six uh we have the double corrupt for fizz taken as elemental on our shield with like min endurance charges um you know perfect basically perfect everything you're uh probably not going to get this um legacy of fury i mentioned this in my main guide this is like the end game type thing this will increase your damage a lot you should aim for this this drops from uh oh that that's where my problem is uh kill all I didn't switch over to kill all yet there okay so actually only 120 million dps but uh yeah yeah you can go over this i'm not going to go over this this is uh this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed i know it was a lot um but yeah should be helpful you should be able to successfully clear everything following this guide um you're probably unless you have mirrors floating around you're probably not going to reach the min max version of this build but uh yeah, hope you enjoyed. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I'll see you next time. Bye.